Okay, music theory students at New Canaan High School, and those of you studying music theory in college or in other high schools, welcome to our discussion about applied chords to five. So we're going to talk about chords that take you to tonicize or either modulate to five. So on the uh, staff paper right now, we have in chorale style E major set up. We have an E major chord. Uh, here's your tonic tone, here's the fifth, here's the third of the chord, and here's the tonic tone reiterated. And then here's your five chord, which is a B major chord. B, B doubled, F sharp, and there's your D. B, D, F sharp. So now we need to compose a chord that makes this chord feel like one. And in order to do that, we compose a chord that is referred to as an applied chord, and it is a five of five. So this is the five that we're talking about. So now you need to think about what is scale degree five of this chord? So this chord is a B major chord. So what is a perfect fifth off of that five? Again, perfect fifth. It's very important to be aware of that. So a P5 up from a B natural is in fact what tone? F? Think again. F sharp would be the correct tone. F sharp would be the correct tone. Let me um, turn on my keyboard here. So here's your, your B natural, and an F sharp is a perfect fifth up from that. So the bass note here needs to be an F sharp. So we can put it below. It might fall a little bit low for those basses, and there's a big leap here. So I think the better option might be to go to the F sharp here. Stem it down, and this tone will descend to that tone. So now here you need an F sharp major chord, an F sharp major chord. So how do you spell an F sharp major chord? It's it's an F sharp. What's a major third up from that? It's an A sharp. And then what's the P5 off that F sharp? It's a C sharp. So you need the tones F sharp. A sharp, and you need a C sharp. Here is your, your root of the chord. We're working in root position. We need an A sharp and a C sharp, and it, again, it's best to double the root. So let's see where we can lead off of. So we're going to um, look at our voice leading. Here is your, your A sharp, and again, this tone is quite interesting because your, your A sharp here uh, functions as your leading tone to your new key. Functions as your leading tone to your new key. So the tonic is here. So a good place to head off that B would be to put that A sharp right in the tenor and stem it up. But again, it's important. You need to call this and name this an A sharp. It is the leading tone to the B. Okay, In B, what is the key signature of B? There's an F sharp, a C sharp, G, D, and there is your A sharp. When you compose an applied chord to the dominant, you need to think in the key in the key signature of the chord you're going into. The chord you're going to is a B major chord. B has an A sharp in it as well. That's the A sharp that belongs to the key. This tone is the second tone of the five chord. Again, it functions as your new scale degree 7 in your new key. And now B is 1. Keep in mind, E was 1 in your old key. But we are no longer treating E as 1. We're treating B as 1. So that is our new leading tone. A sharp moving to B. This is our new scale degree 5 in the new key. Going to 1. So what are the tones we're missing in the soprano and alto? Hmm? We already composed an A-sharp. We cannot compose another A-sharp. Any guessed? The reason is if you double that leading tone, you'll end up having parallel octaves since they both have to resolve upward. We're missing a C-sharp. We need our E-sharp, our C-sharp. Where's a good place to fit that tone in? How about we head off that E-natural to the C-sharp? Right? So you have an F sharp, an A sharp, and a C sharp. 
What scale degree is that C sharp in the new key? It's scale degree 2. Notice how scale degree 2 is moving up to scale degree 3. And now the tone that we need is to double the root. So you double the F sharp. And the F sharp is already in the key signature. And the F sharp sustains because it's the 5. It's the 5th scale degree of the new key, which also exists in the 1 chord. Our 5 is our new 1 chord. Okay. So let's look at that those parts. Here is your bass and tenor part. Here is here is the bass and tenor moving in. So one more time, I'm sorry. Here's your here's your here's your bass and tenor and they're moving up. And there's the A sharp and now there's the resolution. And up on top, here are your two alto and soprano tones. G sharp to E and then the F sharp. Here's your Ray, and then it moves to a, I'm sorry, D sharp here. Okay? So, once again, at this moment, you now feel that you're in one, and you have modulated to five. In our next installment, we're going to discuss how to incorporate inversions of this chord, and now no longer have that descending fifth down or a fourth up in order to get to your five chord, but we can incorporate a smooth stepwise motion with either inverting it into first position where we'd have a five six chord, okay? And then in future um, videos, we'll talk about how to make this into a five seven of five where you'll make this chord into a seventh chord, okay? So students, I hope you are um, picked up something from this lesson and um, let me know if there's any discussion or any question and we can um, right back and, and, and clarify things. So, signing off.